Hello guys, this is Dragonzilla here with a very special review on the brand new 2018 120th scale Deluxe Estamenasukas from Collector. Now since I got this guy, I have been dying to do a review, but I was away at the weekend in Scotland. However, now that I have time to myself again, I can. And I would like to give a special thank you to Everything Dinosaur for sending me this fantastic figure and I would also like to thank my mother for helping me order the model. So without further ado, let's crack on with the review. So what was Estamenosuchus? Well, he was a species of Veratsid, better known as a mammal-like reptile or stem mammal, which I'll talk about later. He lived during the Mid-Permian, which was the last period of the Paleozoic. Its name means crowned crocodile, even though it wasn't a crocodile. And it was also an omnivore, so he could either eat plants or meat. His home habitat would have been near rivers and waterfalls. So he was basically the hippopotamus of the Permian. And fossil remains have been found in Russia. Model itself, now last year when I heard that Collector was making Estamenosuchus, my reaction was, well, I think you guys can remember. Yeah, oh my god, that's the best joke, it's gonna be amazing, it's freaking this guy, yeah! And I finally ended up with the ones which I'm excited for the most, especially the best joke, oh my god! Picking this one up. Unlike you know who, just like their next video, which is the goddamn Estimate of yeah! And Estimate of hell yeah! Estimate of is coming, yeah, I thought so. And of course, I was only doing that in fun and making entertainment. But now I have the figure. It looks better in the flesh. It was sculpted by a chap named Anthony Beeson. And I think he did a fantastic job on this one. It's like he went back in time 270 million years ago, saw the real animal, scanned it, and brought the scans back to the 21st century. This is not the first time Estamenosuchus has been seen as a figure. Back in 1997, one was made as part of the Jurassic Park range by Kenner. However, that figure is now rare and really hard to come by, and was only a kid's toy. Where Collectors is the first proper Estamenosuchus figure that is on the educational side. For the paint job, Collector made the figure green with brownie orange patches. And because this guy lived in swamps, I think it would have been used for camouflage to sneak up on small animals or surprise predators. And as for the brownie patches, I highly doubt that Estamenosuchus would have had those in life, but I suspect that they might have been added for decoration. The toes or claws are a dark grey colour and the belly is a yellow cream, and obviously not a colour but we also have the collector logo, the name of the beast, and the year that it came out. The eyes are black, the mouth and tongue are pink, the teeth are a weathered white, I'm not sure what colour they're meant to be, and the horns are a mixture of lighter and light brown with, with a bit of grey. Like most other figures with large jaws, Estamenosuchus has an articulated jaw, and when it's closed, the figure looks like it is snarling and giving you an uncanny feeling. However, I like to display him with his mouth open. So let's talk about the detail. Now, Estamenosuchus might have lacked scales, and we don't know whether or not he and other Veratsids would have had fur. I think that's up for debate. So what Collector have done, they have given him... Well, how do I describe it? The skin, to me at least, looks like it used to be scales in some areas of the body and it's becoming the type of skin that would eventually be covered by fur. There are depictions of Estamenosuchus with fur or bits of primitive hair, but I think Collector did a great job with the skin. Although I think maybe they could have added a little bit of hair, but I'm happy with the look and thus their figures are scientifically accurate, just like Safari and Eofauna. The tail is short and squat, which a lot of Veratids had. Well, there were some with long tails, but most were short. The head to me is the best part, because it is the classic dinosaur looking head, and he has wrinkles on his face. 
even though it's probably a young Esther Melisukas in his prime. The teeth and fangs, at least I think they're fangs, are individually sculpted and the tongue isn't painted on. Sculpted again? Well, well for high quality figures like this, the tongues are as detailed as the rest of the animal. And the upper part of the mouth is smooth as well. Well, there's a little bit of detail in there, but you know, it's well made too. And now for the one thing that makes Esther Menasuka stand out, and those are the bizarre bony horns. Those are by far the strangest looking set of horns that evolution has ever created. Ideal for rivalry and collector have made them just as epic as the real thing. And it was because of these horns that I used to think that this guy was like a rhinoceros, but since getting this figure and the fact sheet, I now feel that Estamenasuchus was more like a hippopotamus, but a bit more reptilian. This beast was semi-aquatic, and the figure shows that, especially when viewing from the back. He reminds me of an amphibian. Even though Estamenasuchus wasn't an amphibian, he was a mammal-like reptile, or stem mammal. Okay, this is what I want to talk about. So, from what I have heard, for the past few years, Scientists and paleontologists have been saying that we should stop calling veracids mammal-like reptiles and call them stem mammals instead. Now, I'm not giving out any facts or trying to be all trade explainer or telling you all what you should and shouldn't do. I'm just voicing my opinion, so hear me out. Now, most of the time, whatever paleontologists say, I believe them. When they announced that Tyrannosaurus Rex had feathers, I was up for that, and I believe that it was either last year or the year before, they said T-Rex didn't have as much feather in his first thought. However, there are occasions where I am inclined to believe, and this stem mammal idea is one of them. I think stem mammal only works for creatures like Vernaxodon, Placerias, and the early rodents that appeared when the first dinosaurs evolved. However, looking at this figure, even though you can tell that it is related to mammals, it still looks reptilian at the same time. So, in my opinion, the Veratids of the Permian were the mammal-like reptiles, and the ones of the Triassic stem mammals. But that's just my opinion. Your thoughts may be different, and I will respect your opinions, as long as you respect mine in return. So for media appearances, well, aside from books and getting an occasional honourable mention in documentaries, Esther Manasukas appeared in the Click and Point System 3D Dinosaur Adventure in the educational part, and it also appeared in one of the Land Before Time movies. I don't remember which one, because I only saw the first six. However, it appeared in a song about imaginary friends, it's the big blue quadruped Barney with the big flower frill on his head. That's an Estamenasuchus. It doesn't look like the real thing, but it was made kid friendly as opposed to a horned swamp monster from the dawn of time. And now for size comparisons. Since I have the icon of the Permian, let's bring out the Papo Dimetrodon, which was the third figure that we reviewed. The link will be in the description. Estamenasuchus would have been bigger than Dimetrodon, and even though they never met, they do look great, especially when facing each other. Here he is with the Schleich Dinogorgon, and although he looks good, I've got a feeling that Dinogorgon should roughly be about the same size, and he towers over the Safari Limited in Ostransavir, so we definitely need a Deluxe Gorgon opposite from Collector, Papo, or even maybe Safari Limited should upgrade their Inostrantavia. He also looks good with other prehistoric beasts like the Collector Uintiferium, another one we reviewed, the link will be in the description. He is dwarfed by the mighty Step Mammoth from Eofauna Scientific Research, which is another fantastic figure, link below, and another must have. He is almost the same size as the Collector Deodon and the Safari Limited American Mastodon that has also been reviewed, again link below. However, the Mastodon should be larger, and here he is with three dinosaurs, 
Tyrannosaurus Rex, Iguanodon, and Stegosaurus. So overall, what are my final thoughts on the Collector Estamenosuchus? Well, aside from Kenner, there are not that many figures of Estamenosuchus. There may be the odd model kit, but they're probably expensive on eBay and really hard to come by. So I highly recommend adding this figure to your collection. However, like Uintiferium and some other dinosaur and prehistoric animal figures, other companies like Safari Limited, Papo, or maybe Shike will make their own version of Estamenosuchus, since there isn't that much merchandise of this bad boy. I give him a 5 out of 5. I have no problems and no errors with this figure. It's in the legendary category and a must have for all Permian fans. Once again, I would like to give a special thank you to Everything Dinosaur for sending me this fantastic figure and I'll put the link in the description so you can get yours today. This is Dragonzilla signing out, and I will see you all again next time. Goodbye.